Okay, sure, okay. sure. Okay. All right. Um, Action. Yeah, here's the. <laughs> okay. Um, the pattern, look, it's the, what we see in the vase now is not actually what we're tying tonight, but i put this in the vase just to talk a little bit about craft fair. The, the name Mace Haunt is really a name, I think, uh, I don't know if any of you know Marius Rousseau or Tinnis, a couple of guys who fish a lot. When I look up and look at you guys, I see nothing. Let me take them off while I'm looking at you. Um, they've given it a name. It's basically a largemouth yellowfish pattern. It's a baitfish pattern. It's very simple to tie. Um, I've put this, this particular one in the vase just to talk a little bit about craft fur. I mean, you all know what craft fur is. It's, it's dashboard fur, really. It's a synthetic. Um, it's cheap and it's cheerful. <laughs> I'll pass it around. And uh, it's a really wonderful material. It's, uh, I've been doing a lot of articles in Complete Fly Fisherman uh, with, with craft fur involved. Um, you might have seen the, that dragonfly nymph pattern. You can pass that around. Called the Crafty Dragon or crafty roach, should I say. Did you guys see that? Um, it's like Herman's popper roach, also done with craft fur, a little bit easier to tie, quicker to tie, and it, it's a killer. Craft fur just has the movement of marabou in the water, yet it's, uh, it's a lot easier to use and work with. You can work with it in brushes. I've made up a whole bunch of brushes here. I hope we've got enough just, I think we've got, I don't know how many we are Yeah, If you're running shy, we'll, we'll make a plan. Um, but, what I really want you to take away from this evening is we're going to be using a dumbbell. This particular fly that's in the vase here, this is going to, to Shackleton. This is a little tiger pattern. It's got stick-on eyes. It doesn't have a dumbbell in it. And stick-on eyes are much easier to apply after you've done the, the craft fur work with the brush. Working with a dumbbell and a brush is quite tricky, so I wanted to show you that. Hopefully you can, you can take that away with you. Um, the other thing that we're going to use that the original mace haunt uses is, is rabbit strip in, in the fly's construction. So there's, there's not a lot to this fly. It's the hook, the dumbbell. I'm going to put a little bit of a belly into it just to break up all the black. A bit of rabbit strip and a bit of brush. Now, I made up all these craft fur brushes this afternoon out of that patch that I'm passing around. You can see it's been hacked to pieces. And the other brush material, which has got a little bit of flash in it, that's Fishin's brush, and Mark's ordered a lot, Mark Yellen's ordered a lot from us in the past using this brush, and they've done well with that as well. So I don't think it's too critical whether you decide on craft fur or Fishin's streamer brush. I think uh, it's more getting that, the sort of size, the profile, the dumbbells, the combination of the rabbit and, 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 and the brush. That Another thing Marius likes to do, I see in all of his mace haunts, I bought black thread. He ties them with a red thread head. Whether that makes a difference, it makes him more confident. I know a lot of my tiger flies, all my tiger flies I tie with a red head, but I don't know if it makes a huge difference to this particular pattern. So the other thing I want to try and show you if you don't know is how to put in a bit of a, a tail guard to stop this rabbit from wrapping, which you can use in not only this pattern but but a number of, of different flies. You, there's a couple of ways you can stop the rabbit from wrapping and I want to show you that as well. Okay, um, the hook you can use for the fly, it's, you've got a choice there. What you're looking for is something that's not too long in the shank. Um, I was hoping to have the B10Ss, the, the Gamagatsus, but there's a big shortage of them at the moment, so we've settled on this grip hook. It's um, a little heavy wire for, for my liking for largemouth yellows, but it'll do the job. Um, it's got the right shank length. It's a great tiger hook. I mean, you know, if you wanted to tie this particular pattern for, for tiger, it would be perfect. Um, but you want something, you don't want a long, long shank hook. You want a sort of average to short shank hook like your B10S or this particular grip hook. Uh, just using some black 3O. You just want to put a nice base of thread. The first mistake people make when tying any sort of dumbbell into any pattern is um, putting it too close to the eye of the hook. Whether you're tying a clouser or, a, or this particular pattern or any, any sort of brush pattern. In this case, you have to set it even further back because we have to put a few turns of the brush material in front. So, and the other thing is this dumbbell gets set on the underside of the hook. So just set it up on the underside. Make sure you leave enough space to put at least a turn and a half or two turns of, of brush. In fact, I'm going to go a little bit further back. That would be better, I think. There we go. 
middle. Yeah, it's almost the middle. On this hook, Charlie, it certainly is almost the middle. Eh? If you think you've left enough space, I always say leave a little bit more. It's a, it's a good rule. <laughs> okay, I'm sure you all know how to put in a pair of dumbbell eyes. Just going through, it'll help if you if you pop a bit of super glue into this. And just take a few. I'm just doing a few X wraps through and then go in underneath and pull quite tight. What that does is it gathers all the, the wraps together. Another thing that helps make a, a dumbbell eye a lot more durable is when you go through the eye, go around the hook first, then through the eye, then around the hook, then through the eye, rather than just doing this. You're going to get a much more sturdy tie in than just, and then I'll pull all the wraps together. At this point, I'd probably drop some super glue in there, which I'm not going to do now, because whenever I do a demo, I'll probably glue my fingers to this hook, so we'll just leave that out of it. But just drop some super glue in there. So you see, I'm almost in the middle. I've left enough space. We don't need a lot of shank to work with behind you, okay? Right. Once your eyes are nice and securely, just run your thread back. All right, let's talk about this rabbit and this tail guard. What we've got here is I've just got some mono. And I've burnt like you would a mono eye. I've punctured a hole through the rabbit. Can you see that? Okay. And that, it's not a new thing. It's something that's been around for a while. And that will hold this rabbit tail in position when we tie it in. Can you now, see that again? Okay. What I've done is, I don't want to take it out of here because I probably no, won't no. get it back in again. Um, closer to the camera. Yeah. There. Yeah. Can you see the burnt mono? Yeah. yeah. All right. And then I've punctured a hole through the rabbit skin yeah. on this side. Yeah. And then I've thread the 30-pound mono through that hole in the rabbit. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Now what's going to happen is that gets pulled up tight against the, the hole I punctured, and it acts as an anchor. So when I tie this mono in, it creates a bit of a stiff area here that stops the rabbit from wrapping on the hook. You know, largemouth are hard enough to catch. As it is, you know, the worst thing you want is you throw it right up into the perfect spot and you bring it back in your flies. So does everybody know what a tail wrap is? That's a tail wrap, okay? That's what happens. The rabbit comes around or whatever material you're using comes around and it wraps. And your fly will just come back spinning like that and the fish is not going to eat that. So all, all we're doing here is putting in that mono sort of guard. The other way to do it is, is using a piece of mono is to put a loop of mono. Um, and to do that, uh, let's just use these. all you would do here is, I'm going to take this out though, because we're going to use, so we'll tie some mono on this side. I probably wouldn't use as heavy as 30 pounds, sort of 15, 20 pounds, and then we'll, we'll do that. And you can use this on even trout flies in a lighter mono. So that, that little loop of mono acts as a, as a guard as well, stops the material from wrapping. I'm sure a lot of you have seen that before. That's a mono guard. Okay. So you can put that into any, you know, a lot of the time we want to tie a marabou tail that's a lot longer than the hook shank. And as soon as you tie a marabou in longer than a hook shank, you run the risk of it wrapping. So then you have to put in either a stiff little hair, ta uh, short tail guard of hair or mono or whatever the case is. In this instance, I just thought I'd show you this. But before we tie this in, we're going to put in a bit of a belly. Now, this particular pattern here uses a, a material called Predator Wrap, which I'll talk about just now. Um, it's, it's, it's something reasonably new from Hairline. It's like a, a nylon and a flash, but it's on a, on a core, so you can wrap it. But what I'm going to do here is just to break up the belly here, I'm just going to tie in a little bit of a bunch. It just breaks up that black. Okay, so all I've done is I've just cut out a bunch. We can just tie that in. It's a little bit too much. Let's minimize that a bit. And that just gets tied straight on top of the hook. And that's just to create a bit of a belly, belly to the fly. This pattern took um, a lot of us, believe, you know, we all know that largemouth is traditionally a uh, a winter pattern, but uh, Marius last year took over 50 fish on this fly between January and March. 
and uh, which is quite something. They weren't all massive largemouth, anything from sort of two, two and a half kilos to six kilos, but those numbers for me, if any of you fished seriously for largemouth, which I haven't done a lot of, that's quite something. Well, there you go. So it's worth, worth paying some attention to this pattern and so easy to tie. Okay. Um, I've tied the mono and the rabbit. I'm going to just take this out so you can see that stiff area there is going to help stop this, this tail from wrapping. So all we've done is prepare your rabbit. I've got the mono here. Just cut yourself a short length. For those of you who don't smoke, I'm sure you can find somebody with a lighter. Just burn the one end. Puncture a hole with your needle or scissors. Thread it through, pull it up, and you're good to go. And tie it in all, all at the same time. Then don't use your good scissors, as I'm doing, but just get rid of that piece of mono. All right, we've got enough space behind the shank to put a few turns of brush. I want to show you how to deal with the eye, and then a couple of turns in front. Okay, I'm going to use craft. Oh, sorry, where did that mono actually go through? Is that... <coughs> It's I punched up the, the, the burnt the burnt no no the burnt end is on, top. on the top side. Right, okay. Yeah. How far down? So uh, you just want to give it about a centimeter. Okay. Yeah. You're on the hook. <coughs> yeah, it's about that long. You know, you okay. can feel the sample. It's about a centimeter or so. You don't need a lot. It's just to create a bit of to stop that suppleness sure. and that floppiness when it's wet, especially when it's wet. This rabbit's <coughs> all over the place. If you don't have that little stiff area there. It's going to come and it's going to it's going to wrap in on the on the on the hook gap here, so that just stops that from happening. Okay, the mono loop you can use that as well, no problem. If you're going to do the mono loop, put your belly flash in first, mm -hmm. then your mono loop, then your rabbit. All right. Okay, right brush. This is craft fur, the mace hunt, the original mace hunt, the one that Marius likes to fish, is with craft fur. I know because. He's always phoning me for black craft fur. I had 40 packets and it's gone in like two, <coughs> two, not even two weeks. So it's, 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 a, it's a wonderful material. But as I was saying earlier, you can use Fission's uh, material. We, we make up the brushes ourselves. If you don't have the means to make your own brush, you can do a mace haunt with a dubbing loop. All right. What you must make sure though is you use a very heavy thread. I would go for heavier than three. I would use a Danville's flat wax mono or one of the new, well, the nano threads or something heavier. And you can just cut a bunch of, is that piece of skin here? You can cut a, a very healthy bunch of this off, stick it in the loop and then spread it out and then just spin it up. It'll work just as well. Okay. I just find the brushes easier to work with. For those of you you don't have the means of making your brushes we turn materials into brushes on a regular basis we can do that we've got the machines at, at the shop okay I'm going to just tie that in just get in front okay now this is really not gonna Alpheus would be cringing right now because I think for your, um, the material no, uh, it's a stainless steel annealed wire. Oh. Um, it's fission supplies it, and uh, ouch, there we go. Um, <laughs> those are Alpheus scissors. This is fine. <laughs> he always shouts at me, man, don't cut wires, buses. Um, Charlie, it's annealed stainless steel. Fission supplies it to us. It's very, it's it's inexpensive. It's uh, you can twist it up. You have to have annealed, otherwise it it'll snap. You know. And that's all it is. Um, it just allows you to make a whole lot of... And then, you know, when you're making your own brushes, you can blend different colors or you can put flash into it like this brush. This brush has got some flash built in. Don't overdo the flash, though. Um, right. Once you've got your brush tied in, just pull the fibers to one side. You see how I'm doing that? Just getting everything in. Craft Fur has that sort of tendency to mat into itself so it'll all sort of does that make sense all onto one side this is quite long this is extra select craft fur. I'm going to trim quite a lot of this away which is a bit of a shame um, but you know what you can't use half and half with with craft fur. okay and I sell more of it anyway so <laughs> all good <laughs> no right now we're going to wind it when you wind a brush just make sure you pull all the fibers 
facing towards the back. And when we're done with this, it'll look like something the cat's coughed up, but we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna brush it quite. And, we, and look, just leave a little bit of space. You don't need to put these turns like right up against each other. Okay, this is where the fun starts when you get towards the, the dumbbell eye. Now, there's only one way to handle these dumbbells with, with your brush, okay? Let me show you. Now, I hope you can see this. Go through the dumbbell over the top, okay? Come around. Go under the dumbbell. So I've gone once over the top, across, once underneath. Are, we, are you with me? Yeah. Then let the dumbbell grip the brush that side. And then you get into the front. If you try to do too many crisscrosses, you, you're not going to come right, okay? And just keep working those fibers back. And when you hold this brush, you'll see you end up holding a whole lot of the fibers. You have to come in right at the tip here, release some of those fibers. And don't worry about what you're seeing right now. We'll, it'll look very pretty when we're finished. And then one more. I can get one more turn. And we're done. Okay, when it comes to tying it off, just try and separate the fibers so you can see as much of the wire as possible. And then we're going to tie it off. Just take a couple of turns. And that's the tying part of the fly pretty much done. Sorry, Alphonse. Okay. Right, then we can just whip finish that off. Right, now we've got to get busy with the dog brush and my scissors. Okay, underneath here, just come in, you'll see you'll, there's a lot of fibers that are kind of trapped. Just give it a good pull with the scissors. I think you can see where it gets the name Mace Haunt now, eh? Okay, and then you can pick up your brush and don't be afraid to very aggressively brush it out and then stroke it back. Yeah. <laughs> right, now comes the trimming. You want to get very close in at the bottom alongside the eyes. You want to, with any of these brush flies, even though I have these dumbbells on the underside, you want to create more buoyancy on the top of the hook shank. You don't want a lot of material on the underside of the hook shank, purely because you want it to swim the right way up. Not that you're going to be stripping it very quickly. If you're going to tie salt or tiger flies that you do want to fish very quickly, you can put a lead keel on. Do you all know what a lead keel is? Have you seen that done before? Well, you, I don't have any lead yet. Does anybody have any lead yet? And I'll show you quickly how to put a lead keel in. Just uh, any lead. Doesn't matter the thickness. It's just to show you. All right. Can you, so what you can see is I'm trying to get rid of as much material on the bottom as possible with the bulk of the material above the eyes. That's just going to help the fly swim correctly. Thanks very much, Mark. A lead keel, okay, this is quite a thin lead, but I would probably take something a little thicker than this. Just drop some super glue onto the bend of the hook. With super glue it will grip, but we haven't got that, so we'll make it happen. There we go. And then you just put a few turns of the lead over the super glue. Pinch it off. Pinch it off. Now what that lead keel does is it makes a huge difference. In keeping that fly swimming true, okay, not so much the thing I would do for largemouth, but certainly for a saltwater pattern or a tiger pattern that you wanted to strip a lot, a lot quicker. And that's really it. Very simple fly, very easy to tie. And that's called a mace haunt. And that's it. As I said, Marius likes to put a, a red thread head. You can build a bit of flash into this. I've done it without flash. You'll see if you tie it with this particular brush, you're going to have the the, this, the UV flash in it. One other thing that's that's quite a lot of fun to play with. I'll just talk a little bit. Any any questions on that 
those those tying sequences. Anybody not sure of? Because how long is a rabbit for a tail? Well, the beauty about a rabbit that's oh, that's probably three times the length of the shank. You could make it a bit shorter. That's the nice thing about rabbit. If you want to shorten it a little bit, and in fact I probably would on this fly. I tend to make them a bit longer, and then I'll see how the fly looks. Left, left, left. Sorry, I just cut it at a. There we go. It's been cut. To, I like to cut my rabbit at a point, but for me that's probably that's probably the right sort of length. I like that length of that size hook. You can make it a bit shorter if you like. Ugh, I don't think it's a big deal. Depends on what you, what sort of size you want. Marie, yes. A weed you can. Yeah, that's a good question. If you want to continue with a weed guard, you can do it in one step. When you when you put that mono through the rabbit, make it longer. You'll end up tying it over the hook, through the eye, and back again. And then it'll be pushing itself right up against the, the dumbbell eye. But when you come to wrapping the, rabbit, the, the, the brush, you can position your weed guard using the brush material. Does that make sense? Okay. Other things you can do that are, are quite a lot of fun, this, this particular pattern here, that olive fly, has it come back? Anybody? Ah, oh, thank you. Uh, you'll notice this has got quite a neat scale effect. I don't know if you can see it on the kind of can see it. Um, this is a lot of fun. The Copic airbrush. Have you guys seen this? Yeah, they, you get them at Herbert Evans Art Shop. A lot of fun. You can have. We've been we tied all the game changes for Farquhar using. Uh, to get scale effects and then you get these pattern patches which is really just a sort of a nylon mesh you can find all sorts of different pattern patches I mean we use it a lot on foam on foam hopper, uh, poppers and that and really what we're going to do yeah let's take this out is you can just come in here and you can just uh, create your pattern very quickly and you get you get all different scale pens. That's what I did with this minnow. And it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's Copic pens as opposed to trying to do it with paint. So a lot of fun. I, I don't sell them. We can't sell them because Copic's got an agreement with uh, all the art stores. But, yeah, you get them at Herbert Evans. A couple of Copic pens. They cost more than the, the, <laughs> the spray gun. And you can play around with different effects and, and different sort of techniques and so on, yeah. Um, you can... I would, I would tie these in black and probably be in olive, but it seems that the, the original mason that the guys really love is done with the black black craft. Fur. Murray, um, the original mason, is it, is it with the dumbbell eyes or with the stick-on eyes? The one that Marius uses with the dumbbell eyes, yeah. And he uses the Fudu's dumbbell eyes. You'll see it's a little different to this Spirit River eyeballs, or and that's, I don't have my heckle pliers here, but that's, that's a different eye. You can use that one. That's what he uses with the, with the original. The, pho the photograph he sent me a couple of months back was done with the... It's, it's tied just like this, except without this belly in it. It's got a red thread head. It's got a bit of flash in the craft fur brush and a black rabbit strip tail. Simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Any other questions? Good stuff. Um, oh yeah, the one other thing I wanted to show you, Predator Wrap, great material, you want to play with it. Um, you can create a bait fish pattern very quickly. What we did with this fly, if you have a look at it, is there's a bit of craft fur underneath. I can tell you now, this is going to kill tigers, um, I'm sure of it. But the beauty of the Predator Wrap is you can simply tie it in like you would any brush with or without a dumbbell because you could easily work behind and in front of a dumbbell eye with this and then it's just a case of wrapping it it's all on one side of this yarn core and yeah in one easy step you can create yourself a interesting bait fish now the reason we put that craft fur or a bit of a you could put an egg yarn sort of base underneath I think it's quite evident why we do that it creates a much more of a profile. Alright.
but it's as simple as that to use. And also I think by putting that, uh, this stuff will wrap terribly if you don't have some kind of a sort of support base to it. You could put bucktail underneath, then wrap it, um, craft fur. It's just a very interesting material to, to play with. Yeah. Good. Any other questions, chaps? Good to go. Right. All the stuff, I've cut up the materials here. You'll just have to take some rabbit. You don't need a huge stretch of rabbit, just a small section. <laughs> Thank you.